Please use the link below to get the notes, questions and other videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share to others for our daily new videos. Yeah, welcome back guys. Welcome back to our class. We are looking for distinctions and uh, uh, making sure that we pass. All of us, we must pass. We must go to the university. Nothing can refuse us from passing. This is meiosis. And the content creator today is M. Saidi as usual. Uh, we have exciting news. We have exciting news on our channel to our learners who are using our channel. We will be providing vouchers uh, along the video. Um, so it will be airtime. It can be 10 rand, it can be 20 rand, it can be 30 rand, 50 rand, 100 rand. So in each and every video we'll be releasing uh, from now sometimes the first person to comment on our video then we will take that person and then we'll give a voucher maybe the voucher maybe for kfc a voucher for uh, mcdonald yeah as we grow as we continue growing you never know that uh, maybe we will have to have big prizes for uh, our channel number two is uh, we have also opened another youtube channel which is going to help us in um yeah, we know that this channel is designated to students who are grade 7 to grade 12. Uh, we are still building it. We are adding more videos each and every day. We have more teachers who are going to be coming to be producing content. But now we have opened another channel which is uh, going to be shooting uh, to the university and also at least know how you can make money when you're still a student yes you can also ask questions yeah, it can be questions for health any questions you feel like you want to know maybe but not uh in the context of of of, of, of education only there are some things which uh parents uh people don't talk about so this is the time this channel is going to be trying to answer those questions people have you just drop a question or whatsapp and then we make a video concerning about the question you have asked so guys subscribe and then hit the notification bell hit the notification bell so that when you release any video uh in in, in our channel you just know that or just click the link and then start watching the video then you get your airtime get your prizes yeah the vulture will be embedded in the video and then the first person to to spot that vulture then you'll be able to use it but that person who has got that vulture please comment down that yeah i'm so and so yeah i've got the vote yes today we are going to be looking at what you call um meiosis i know meiosis is one of the difficult uh, topics very simple to take to grasp but when it comes to answering questions uh people get a lot of problems concerning about this topic yet is very easy to understand but it is very complex when it comes to answering questions concerning about it so so what is meiosis so you can visit our website uh, www.sandaeduke.com and then or if you have any challenge question then you can also whatsapp on that number that is uh, msid so i'll be able to try to answer your questions Let's look at meiosis. Meiosis, we say that meiosis, human reproduce. Other organisms reproduce. They multiply. What about cells? Cells, they have two kinds of uh, reproduction they undergo. They have what called mitosis and you have what called meiosis. My, mitosis can occur in other body cells, but meiosis occurs only in the reproductive cells. Where did you come from? Actually, meiosis was the basis of you living. Without meiosis, you wouldn't have existed. So let's look at meiosis in detail. So it's a type of cell division that results in four daughter cells, each with half number of chromosomes to that of the parent. So it means that meiosis uh, starts with the uh, uh, it starts with the one cell. This cell divides, and then you form four daughter cells. These cells 
they have half the chromosome number to that of a parent. If you have started with the four chromosomes, it means that uh, the, these cells they will result in two chromosomes. That's why you're saying that half the chromosome number of that of the parent. If the man, uh, the body cell is having 46 chromosomes, then the, the reproductive cells or the daughter cells which are resulting from that are going to be having 23. And then uh, from the mother also 46, they're going to result into 23. So the process of re reducing these cells into uh, half the chromosome number, that process, or that reproductive process is what you call meiosis. So what does meiosis result in? So this meiosis will result in the production of gametes. Gametes, these are the sperms and the ova, and talk, we, when you're talking about the humans, and then plants, you're talking about spores, and, uh, the pollen grains, you can talk about the ovules. Those are some of the things uh, which are as a result of, uh, of meiosis. So in humans or in animals, it occurs in the ovary. See this colored word, in the ovary. Uh, basically, uh, ovary are found in female. And then these ovary, they produce what you call the ova. So the reproductive cells in the, fem in the females, we call them ova. If this one is called the ova, if there are many, we call them ova. And then uh, in, in male, in male we call it, it's, it's occurring in testes. And then... In testes, uh, what we call, we call them spermatozoa. The cells which are being produced, we call them spermatozoa. So in female, we call them uh, ovary. Those are the ova. Ovaries, the ovaries produce the ova. And then in, in, in the testes, uh, they produce what we call the spermatozoa. What about in plants? In plants, it occurs in the ovary still. But uh, what it produces, uh, ovary produce what we call the ovules. Meiosis occurs in the anthers, and then what it is being produced is what you call the, uh, the pollen grain. So the question can come and say that um, other than the ovary in animals, which other place does uh, meiosis occur? That is testes. And what does it produce? It produces what you call the spermatozoa. And then in, 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 in plants, uh, it occurs in the ovary. It produces what you call the obvious. Basically, uh, that's what you needed to know about this first introduction of, of meiosis. You know, meiosis is basically uh, the cell divides. And the, the most important thing to divide is the nucleus. So we need to know the nucleus to do a recall about the nucleus because we saw the nucleus at the beginning of DNA and also saw the nucleus in the grade 10. So let's look at the nucleus, the centrosome, and then the cytoplasm. Nucleus contain the genetic material. What about cyto means uh, a cell, and then plus means uh, a fluid, the fluid of the cell. So basically, this is what you are going to look at. Let's look at them in detail. So this is a cell. It has a nucleus. Outside, you have what you call a cytoplasm. Then in the cytoplasm, you have what called a centrosome. Centrosome, why do we talk about the nuclear centrosome and the cytoplasm? Because uh, this, uh, the, the DNA, you'll find it there, and then it is the centrosome which, which produces the centrioles, and the centrioles produce spindle fibers which hold the chromosomes in position. That's why you talk about it. And then there is a time when this one disappears and then you remain the content of the cytoplasm. So the nucleus disappear and then remain only with the content of the cytoplasm. So basically that is a nucleus. And then when it brings it in exam, it looks like this. So this is a nucleus. It's a nucleus, but the nucleus has a dense body, which we call the nucleolus. Nucleolus. Then outside the nucleus, it you have uh, the nuclear membrane, which has the extensions. Extension, which you call the endoplasmic reticulum. But because it has the ribosome, they look rough. Then we call them the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum. So basically, uh, that's it. Uh, it has the nuclear pore, the holes where substances go through, most especially messenger RNA in this case. 
A and other substances. Then you have what you call the nucleoplasm, the nucleo, the plasma of the nucleus, meaning that the fluid of the nucleus, the nuclear envelope. Uh, that's what you call the nuclear membrane. Then the ribosome. We say that the ribosome the sites for protein synthesis. Chromatin. This one is the one which condenses to form chromosomes. And then you have the nucleolus. Then you have the rough endoplasmic nucleum. So we have explained all that. So when you look at the nucleus or when you look at the DNA, basically that's what you see. You have when the chromatin network condenses, you form what you call the chromosome. So the chromosomes, uh, they condense. You see they have condensed. And then after that, you form the real structure of a chromosome. It looks like this. So that's the structure of a chromosome. Now let's look at the chromosome in detail. So we have seen where the chromosome come from. It cannot exist without DNA, with its specific genes. You see, it has specific genes. So let's look at the structure of a chromosome. Why do we need to look at it? chromosome? Will you resemble your father because of the chromosome, because of the genes you obtained from your parents? Your father, your mother. What about those who don't resemble the father and the mother, but they resemble their grannies? We shall see. Another question. What about why? So in this topic, we're going to see why. Why do you resemble uh, your neighbor? Why do you resemble when you go somewhere? When you go somewhere, someone can say that, hey, when you resemble someone, why do you resemble someone? Those are some of the questions we are going to answer. And this is the reason why we need the structure of the chromosome. So the structure of the chromosome. Chromosomes are thread-like structures present in the nucleus. They're thread-like. They're thread-like. It means that they are like strings, thread-like structures found in the nucleus. That's why you talked about the nucleus, which carry genetic material. That's why you resemble your father. That's why you resemble your mother. Which carry genetic material from one generation to the next generation. So it means that your kids will try to resemble you. Yes. Then you're saying that each chromosome is made up of the DNA. We saw this, that DNA genes are almost the same thing, but on a different scale. So these DNA or these genes are tightly coiled many times around a protein called histones. So the histones, we saw this when we are talking about, uh, when we are talking about uh, protein synthesis and also the when you're talking about the structure of the DNA. Yes, so they, they coil around it to form what called the histones that support the structure of the DNA. Because the genes cannot just exist there in, 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 in air, they, they, they need to have a support. So the support which, uh, the support, we call it them histones. So these are the support which make the DNA strand to stand or to be where it is and so that the chromosome can be formed when this dna condense all right this is the structure of of of, of chromosome before remember we talked about uh, during dna replication that when does it occur we say that it occurs before the cell divides or before meiosis so before the cell divide the chromosome will look like this Yes, they will look like this. Therefore, we call this one single-stranded chromosome. Chromosome one, chromosome two. Sometimes we call them unreplicated chromosomes. They have not yet done DNA replication. But the moment DNA replication occurs, this chromosome is going to change from this format to this format. That's why we say that it doubles the chromosome number. Don't say that it increases the chromosome number. It increases the chromosome number. It increases the genetic material from what to what. The best answer is to is double the chromosome number, doubles the chromosome number, so that when it was like this, then it becomes like that. So uh, this is the centromere, the center of the chromosome. We call it centromere. The two chromosomes which look alike, it means that uh, they share the same structure, yes, and the position of the genes on them, then we call them homologous chromosomes homologous chromosomes. So one chromatid from one chromosome and another chromatid from another chromosome because they are homologous chromosomes. Therefore, because we're talking about chromatids of homologous chromosomes, then they are going to become homologous chromatids. Why? Because we say that they are coming from 
homologous chromosomes, but each part is a chromatid. Therefore, they become homologous chromatids. So, um, so sometimes, as I say that, this is called unreplicated chromosomes, and then we call these ones the replicated chromosomes, or what you call homologous chromosomes. So each of these have, has two names, unreplicated chromosomes or single-stranded chromosomes, and then these ones, double-stranded chromosomes or replicated chromosomes. So... The number of chromosomes in each cell is a characteristic of organisms. For example, humans, we have 46 chromosomes. You'll find out that Drosophila minongasta has eight chromosomes. You'll find out that the sheep has over 60 chromosomes. So each organism has a specific number of chromosomes it has. And you might find out that the biggest organism has fewer number of chromosomes. So that's how life or how that's how God is. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether you are big or small, but you might have your own uniqueness. We are saying that uh, chromosomes which are single thread or strand become double when the chromatid joined by centromere. So the center of the chromosome, we call it centromere as a result of DNA replication. So if DNA replication occurs, as we said, now the single-stranded chromosome are going to become double-stranded. So that's why you call it unreplicated chromosome or single-stranded chromosome. The moment DNA replication occurs, it becomes double-stranded chromosome or replicated chromosomes. Yeah. So what are some of the differences between uh, the haploid and diploid? Higher. Di means two. Ploide means uh, you are describing a body. Nah, yeah. So half mean half means it, it is derived from the word half. Half the chromosome number. If a human being is supposed to have 46 chromosomes, so when you are haploid or when the structure is haploid, it has the half the chromosome number of that organism. For example, if an organism has 20, the haploid state of it is going to be 10. If the organism is having uh, 32, the haploid number uh, of that uh, organism, uh, or haploid state of that organism is going to be 16. So haploid means half the chromosome number. Diploid means doubling. Eh? doubling. What does it mean? Where is the double there? It means that half from the father, half from the mother, and then they double it. When they double, then they form what called a diploid or diploid the way you uh, pronounce it. So haploid is the quantity of the cell or organism having a single set of chromosomes. They have what called a single set of chromosomes. So if you have chromosome number from one to two, from chromosome number from one to 10, these chromosome numbers, these chromosomes must be in pairs. So if you are haploid, chromosome number one to 10, they will be in single, single, single. They will be one, 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 one. They won't be in pairs. So that's what you call the haploid. But if it is diploid, is when the cell or organism has a paired or two sets of chromosomes, paired or two sets of chromosomes, one from each parent. It means that one from the father, one from the mother. When they combine, because there are two organisms contributing this, then you form the word die, which is... Um, Two and then ploidy means uh, a body. Yes, it's, it's a state which you describes organism with two sets of chromosomes, one from the father and one from the mother. That's the meaning. So, for sexual reproduction to take place, sexual it means that it must include the gametes. It must include the gametes and it must include the sex. Reproduction to take place. Yes, what happens? Uh, a haploid male gamete. That is, uh, if we are talking about humans, we are talking about sperms. We refuse with a haploid. It means that we will refuse. When you say a haploid male gamete, half of the chromosome number from the male. The gamete will have half of the chromosome number from the male. If the male is 46, the gamete is going to have, or the sperm is going to have, 23 chromosomes. We refuse with the haploid number from haploid from the female. Also now the female is going to produce 23. When they fuse together, you form fertilization. 
So when they fuse together, that process is called paralyzation. Now you form what you call a diploid because half from the father, half from the mother, then because it's half, half from different people, then it becomes die, becomes two. They fuse together. And then um, when we're talking about fusion or paralyzation, we are not talking about sex because there is the fusion or, or fertilization can take place without sex. Meaning that how, meaning maybe they use a, a male just give out the sperms. So when you're talking about fertilization, we're talking about sex has already occurred and then the sperms, they swim along the female reproductive system and then fusion will take place. This fusion can even take place. Someone had sex at night and then you're walking on the street, fusion is taking place. Imagine, well, did you know when, when was your fertilization took place? You don't know. Even your parent doesn't know. Okay, those are the wonders of the science. All right. If you need more questions concerning about this reproduction, go and visit our YouTube channel, which you call Bright Doctor. Bright Doctor. I'll give you the link in the description below so that you can understand it better. All right. The result is a diploid zygote. The result is a diploid zygote. So when you have a haploid, a haploid, you form a diploid or a diploid zygote. So it means that when the sperm fuses with the ovum, you form what you call a zygote. But this zygote has a diploid number of chromosomes. This body has a diploid number of chromosomes. It means half from the father, half from the mother. All right, haploid, half, which is indicated haploid is indicated as one n and then diploid is also indicated as one sorry haploid from the mother one n for example haploid from the father for example is also one n so when you combine them you form the diploid which is whole yes it's, 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 it's the whole now half and half you get whole Yes, basically half from the father, half from the mother, from the diploid. Die means two, meaning that contribution from one person and contribution from another person. So because the, this resultant uh, body is having two contributions, then we call it a diploid. So it is indicated as 2N. We shall be using this language. So you have to know when someone uses this language, you must know what it means. So a sperm, ovum, and then you form a zygote. Zygote is where a fetus develops from. We shall see in the videos we're going to be releasing soon. Uh, uh, how is the zygote form? You see the sperm swimming after, uh, after, sexual, after sexual intercourse. You see the sperm swimming going to the ovum and the fertilization takes place. For more detailed about this, visit what you call the bright doctor. Bright doctor, uh, just a link below. Drop your question, then we shall give you the answers on that YouTube channel. But for purpose of, of passing exams, we don't go far away from this. But there we can describe as much detailed as you want. So uh, sexual cells is i.e. that is palms and over are haploid. So we call them haploid. They are one N, 23 chromosomes in humans. So it means that the other organisms have different chromosomes. So we have what called the somatic cells. So it means that we have two types of cells. We have what called the sex cells. Those are the gametes. I say that meiosis can only take place in these cells. We don't find meiosis in any other cells, only in the gametes. So you have the other body cells, some, some, some. Som, soma comes from the word soma, which means a body. Yes. So these are body cells, a diploid, which means that they are 2N. If they are 46, it means that the haploid is going to be 23. But the question when it comes, it does not bring only human. You can only talk about 46 if they have specified in the question that this is a human cell. Because they can bring a cell with 10 chromosomes. They can bring a cell with 4 chromosomes. If they don't specify that this is a human, please don't use 46. Because the question is not asking about humans. Then you have uh, the 23 pair of chromosomes that result in the zygote are divided as follows. How? Number 
22 pairs, these are the number of chromosomes we have in the body. 22 pairs, that is from pair number one to pair number 22. We call them orosomes. Orosomes. It means that how many chromosomes we have? 44, because this is a pair, pair number one up to pair number 22. We call these ones orosomes. One pair of sex chromosome, that uh, one pair, that is the 23rd pair, we call it sex chromosome. Oh, scientifically, we call them gonosomes. Scientifically, we call it gonosomes. So this pair is divided into two. We have what called the XX, which is female, and then you have XY, which is male. So it means that um, females always they will have XX, and males will always have XY. Ah, there is a question which is supposed to be posed here. Why? If, 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 if females are XX and the males are XY, it means that it's the males to determine the sex. Because female have X, also male has X. But female don't have Y, but male have Y. So it's the male to males to determine the sex of the human being, the sex of an individual. So males, you must stop. You must stop saying that ladies are only giving you females. They're only giving you boys. They're only giving you girls. Say, I'm giving myself boys. I'm giving myself girls. It's you who is determining this. However, there are some other factors which also determine. It can be on the side of the female. For more details, visit the bright doctor. Drop your question there. We will be able to answer those questions. If you drop the question there, then I'll be able to answer those questions. Uh -huh. Humans have what we call the chromosomes. From We say that from chromosome number one to chromosome number 22. They, these chromosomes are arranged in a specific order and they appear in a specific way. They, they, they are in pairs, uh, and then they describe different characteristics in the organism. So let's look at the karyotype, the, the, the composition of the nucleus. Which kind of nucleus? Which kind of nucleus do you have? The chromosomes, the type. Karyo is, is, is derived from the nucleus and the type. So which type of the nucleus do humans have? That's derived the name of karyo type. Humans cell are made up of 46 chromosomes. It means that the, our nucleus uh, have 46 chromosomes. And then these 46 chromosomes are arranged in pair. These chromosomes are arranged in pairs. It means that they cannot exist as singles. What does it mean if you're not married? <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. That means that they are arranged in pairs. Each pair is different from each other. Oh, each pair is different from other. By? So this, this, these pairs are different. By? How do they differ? How do they differ? They differ by shape, size, and genetic composition. So pair number one is totally different from pair number two by size, shape, and the genetic composition. It means that what pair number one determines is not the same thing what pair number two determines. For example, you'll find out that chromosome number 23, pair number 23 will determine the sex. You cannot find this in other chromosomes. So they vary in shape, size, and the genetic composition. From pair number one to pair number 22, number one to 22 are called orosomes. What about 23rd pair is called gonosomes, which has XX for female and the XY for male. X, you have to know this, X is longer and bigger over Y. Why? X is longer and bigger over Y. Question, why? Why is X longer and bigger? Bright doctor will answer that. But uh, on the purpose of this, um, X carries more genes compared to Y. Compared to Y. 
So, so, so uh, a karyotype, an example, looks like this. You see that chromosome number pair, number one, number two, number three, number four, they, they, they vary in appearance, shape, and also they vary in the genetic composition. So from one up to 22, we call them all this, we call them gonosomes. Uh -uh. We call them orosomes. And then the 22nd pair, we call it gonosomes. So basically, uh, that's it. Uh, revision of the process of mitosis. It's not. It's advisable before you start meiosis to do a revision uh, concerning about concerning about the process of mitosis. So, guys, our next video, as we say that we're gonna be having uh, prizes, airtime, uh, meals. Yes, we send you a voucher and then you buy whatever you want to buy. It can be a school bag, T-shirts. We have a lot of gifts to give out on our YouTube channel. Uh, so please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, so that others also benefit, benefit from this content. And then we're going to be having all the subjects. So we are trying to increase this. So oh, mitosis occurs in every living organism. In the somatic body cell to produce, those are the body cells, other cells other than sperm and ovum, to produce genetically identical cells. So you can have a hole on the mouth, on, on, on the cheek, and then uh, you need meat. So what they can do, they can cut the bum and then they put on the mouth, so you move with the bum on, on, on your face. Uh, basically, why? Why do they do they do that? Because these cells they undergo what called mitosis. They are genetically identical. They are genetically identical. The meat from your bums is exactly the same as the meat from your face in terms of the genetic composition. So uh, two identical cells are reproduced. Two identical cells are produced with uh, identical chromosome number equal to the original cell. It means that the parent and the babies or the daughter cells, they're exactly the same. There is no difference. That's why when you get your wound, another meat develops. Those cells which develop, they're exactly the same. Mitosis has only one cell cycle, i.e., it doesn't have that that my, mitosis one and mitosis two. No, it only has one cell cycle. Only one cell cycle. It means that meiosis, when on the, on the side of meiosis, it has two cell cycles, meaning that it has meiosis one and also has meiosis two. So, guys, let's look at the process of meiosis. Yeah. The process of meiosis was a very good introduction of, of, of meiosis. Now let's look at meiosis in detail. And this will be our next topic tomorrow. Don't miss it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and then share the video. We will be having gifts, uh, prizes in the, our next videos, starting from meiosis. Thank you very much. And also don't forget to like subscribe and share our new youtube channel in the link below called the bright doctor m once giving you the lesson thank you